So in my previous video, how to create your own cryptocurrency using CryptoNote, um, I had a lot of really interesting feedback. So thanks to everyone who was active in that comment thread for that video. Um, there's a lot of community support helping each other out with different errors and finding ways to work through those. That was really cool. Um, but what I also saw is that some people were getting to the end of the video and not really knowing that they had succeeded and then they didn't know what to do with what they had created then. Um, you know, I kind of glossed over in the past minute of the previous uh, video all the tools that you had created, didn't really go into detail about how they're actually used in a real world scenario, especially because there's no graphical user interfaces uh, generated after the end of the last video. Um, command line can be tricky for a lot of people, kind of intimidating um, if you're not used to working in it. Uh, so I thought I'd make a quick follow-up video to show uh, how all these programs you generated using CryptoNote um, can be used and how you can actually set up wallets and send and receive funds. So let's get right to it. So first of all, this command line stuff I'm doing, um, I'm doing in a program that ships with all Macs uh, and all Linux operating systems um, called Terminal. So you can just search for Terminal on your computer uh, and you should see a screen similar to this. Um, I had some in the last video some custom colors that I had set up and stuff and I think that caused some people to not recognize it. But this is what you'll probably see on your computer out of the box if you haven't done any uh, configuration. So this picks up right after the end of the last video, um, and you can see that we've generated a whole bunch of a whole bunch of programs. So for this example, I'm using a crypto note based coin called Turtlecoin, uh, which has been around for a little while now. Um, a really cool project. You might want to check that out. Um, most crypto note based coins have in com common a few different programs. The first you'll see the name of the coin, like in my previous example, is Memcoin. This time it's TurtleCoin uh, with a D on the end of it. And that is the main daemon. Uh, we'll take a look at that. I'll tell you exactly what that is as well. Um, you'll see a couple other things like connectivity tool are common to all crypto note based ones. Um, but the important ones we'll be looking at are minor and simple wallet. So let's take a look at what each of these are and how they interact with one another. So the first thing we're going to be taking a look at is the daemon. So this, the name of this will be different depending on what you named your coin, but um, they should all end with the D, and that's how you know what it is. What the daemon does is it is, you can think of it as the thing that's actually encapsulating the blockchain. It's doing the root of the work of what you commonly think of in blockchains. It's um, reaching out to other peers on the network, um, you know, building a consensus, um, keeping everything up to date, and along with that, even though a wallet isn't a part of the daemon, the daemon is actually what all the other programs interact with. So from within your wallet, if you're sending funds, it just sends that command that to the daemon, and that's what sends it out to the rest of the network. So the daemon needs to be running in the background um, all the time for any of the other stuff to work. Um, there's several ways to do this. I've seen several people recommend the screen command. Um, I've, in my videos in the past, I've just been doing it using tabs. Um, you could run this as a service, so it just runs in the background and you don't need to actually have it up on your screen at all. But the reason I'm doing it with these tabs is just to, to demonstrate it very clearly what's going on behind the scenes. So when you run your daemon, what's going to happen is it's going to give you a whole bunch of feedback like this. Um, what basically this all means is setting up a database to store all the information. It's trying to find all the, other, all the other peers on the network by first connecting to those seed nodes that were initially set up, and then from there, finding other nodes in the network. Then once that happens, it's going to just continually be updating blocks. You'll probably see some warnings, some errors come in here. But for the most part, we can leave the screen alone now. As long as it's doing its thing in the background, all the other surfaces can connect to it. So let me just go ahead and create a new tab. Let's look at some of these other tools that we created. So first of all is Simple Wallet. You'll notice there's two actually different wallet programs. Um, wallet D has a ton more functionality, um, but for 99% of the time, you're just going to need Simple Wallet, so it's easier to use, so just use that. And you have the option of opening an existing wallet, generating a new wallet file, or importing a wallet, or of course, exit. So let's generate a new wallet file.
wallet file name is, let's say, video example. I'm not actually going to use this wallet um, in real life, and you'll see why here in a second. Uh, make up a password for it. And you'll see because everyone watching this video will now see all my private keys and everything for this wallet. So this generated a new wallet. Here is the public address. So this is the string that you can send people to get them to send you money. In the wallet, we can see uh, a number of things you can do. You can type help at any time to see the commands. Um, first, let's just type balance and check the balance of this wallet. And of course it's zero because I just created it. From here you can look at each of the commands. The one you might use uh, most often is transfer. So mix and count on a crypto note based currency um, is basically how secure and untraceable you want the transaction to be. So typically you want that to be somewhere from like three to five or depending on Depending on the network, it, it just depends. Um, so for example, we'd say transfer, um, mix and count three, and then we put a big long address here, and then an amount. That's how we would do a transfer. Yeah, give me a long address. Another thing that um, really comes in handy, uh, you'll need to do at least once, is export keys. It'll give you your private keys that you don't want to give to anybody else unless you really, really trust them, because that's how you can regenerate this wallet on any other computer, um, whether or not you have access to the wallet file that we created. So speaking of, you'll see that video example address and wallet were created as separate files by that simple wallet program. So finally, let's take a look at the miner. Now that you have a wallet address, uh, you can actually mine this coin and get rewarded for it. The simplest way to do that is just start up the miner. It tells you you have to specify the address option because there's not a whole lot to this, uh, visually at least. I mean, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, but the one option it does have to have is the address, and that's the address, newly generated wallet address, to be that address, presumably. So specify the address variable. It starts the miner right up. And that's really all there is to it, to the miner, visually. So once you get your wallet address set up for your new coin, once you get the daemon running, and then once you start mining, blocks will start to be added to the chain. So there you have it. Those are the three major programs that you'll need to use once you have your coin up and running, once you have your network created with the initial seed nodes, then you've then generated a wallet, and started mining and sending the proceeds of that mining to that address. So I hope that clears some things up for some people and helps set expectations about what you should be seeing when you compile a crypto note, cryptocurrency from source. Thanks for watching.